Today we're going to be looking at how you can use a Raspberry Pi for a quick and simple easy DNS sinkhole using Pi-hole. Coming up. Hey everybody, so everybody is pretty much working from home as of late because of the whole COVID virus thing, if, if you can work remotely. And I had a Raspberry Pi laying around and I wanted to see how easy it was to set up Pi-hole, which is a DNS sinkholing application. Now, really, the original intent of Pi-hole was more around um, blocking ads and, and network-wide, you know, advertising. Uh, when you go to a website, you know, you've got the main content of the site itself, but then there's ads just popping everywhere, and sinkhole, um, excuse me, Pi-hole uh, will block those, which is great. But I was also thinking how nice it would be uh, to be, have the dynamic capability if you're... Um, you know, there's a malicious domain or you get some input, you can feed in malicious domain lists and stuff in order to further protect you and your network users from malicious uh, activity. Now, there is DNS resolvers like Quad Nines and Google DNS that does offer some level of kind of threat intelligence and security uh, in that DNS resolution, which is great because Pi-hole actually uses um, you can configure it for, for different DNS resolvers. I've used Quad Nines, but you can use that is the main DNS resolver, and then Pi-hole kind of sits in between and actually uh, applies an additional level of network blocking. So let's just jump right into it, and I'll show you the hardware I used, I'll show you the software I use, I'll show you kind of the uh, pain points that I encountered along the way so you can not encounter them yourself, and hopefully uh, you can check out this project. Let's jump on the computer. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is the Raspberry Pi hardware. So what I uh, have been using, I originally got this for a retro Pi, kind of home video arcade, kind of 80s thing uh, for my kids and such, but um, this was what I originally bought. This is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Uh, it does have onboard ethernet, is, is also has a wireless uh, NIC on it, and you can see this whole kit comes with the um, heat capacitors and such so you, you basically just put it together you get a nice little case you also need to get an SD card I got a 128 gigabyte one uh, which is plenty uh, I don't know exactly the size of the Raspbian distro that comes on this but it's it's plenty 128 gigs okay so once you get all that you go over to um, raspberrypi.org and I use the noobs which is the new out of the box software build uh, you just put it on the SD card you follow the instructions it's fairly straightforward I'll link to all these um, sites in the description below so once you've got Raspbian Pi up a uh, Raspberry Pi up and running and you're able to log in and stuff then you just go to pihole.net um, and you know you'll come in here depending on the way you want to do it I personally chose to just install Pi-hole uh, I didn't use a docker container or anything like that now um, this is a one-step automated install I mean they offer alternative installation methods because you may not be uh, comfortable piping something into bash but um, I'm not using this Raspberry Pi for anything and if it was like you know crazy or something I'd have a, uh, a problem but in reality if I cloned the repo down and ran it um, I, I wouldn't be looking at the source code anyway, so I felt comfortable doing this. So once you do this, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It fully loads, and then you are up and running with your Pi-hole. Now, what does Pi-hole do? Pi-hole is essentially a DNS resolver. So what you'll want to do is either at your network level or at your um, at the host base level, you'll want to change the DNS to point to your Pi-hole. Now, I do want to point out one quick thing here um, that you should do. So at the, at the Raspberry Pi OS level, you'll want to enable um, SSH so you can remote into the Pi hole. As you can see, um, I, I have right, oh, looks like I got disconnected. So I'm gonna SH in, there you go, who am I? <clears throat> I'm Pi, okay, so you'll want to configure that and it, that's basically, um, pretty straightforward. I, I'll, I'll show a little uh, sub video that I'll cap with my, my phone or something and, and splice it in here. Uh, but once you enable SSH, you'll be able to remotely manage the entire system, which is great. So as you can see, um, the uh, wireless NIC is 192.168.181. And <clears throat> so you'll that's what you'll want to use as your DNS resolution uh, for those type of things. Now, uh, on the Raspberry Pi, if you want to configure um, the the address for 
DN, uh, for where the DNS server is, you have to do it in the, um, uh, whatever, in order to configure the DNS for the um, Raspberry Pi, you'll have to edit the DHCP um, CD uh, comp file. You can see I've already I've already done that, but um, you can see right here on my wireless NIC interface, I've changed my domain name server to the Pi Hole server itself, so it's looking at itself. Um, I've also done it on my uh, MacBook, also. I mean this this Mac uh, computer I'm on right now. So you can see for the wireless NIC, I've converted the DNS server to, to look at the Pi Hole. Okay, so now all my DNS resolution is going through the Raspberry Pi. There's a whole host of um, uh, arguments that you can pipe and, and just kind of manage this on the command line. But the the GUI interface is really nice looking. Um, you can see that it, it's showing active in the load on the system. I did try to uh, download and install some type of like DNS uh, load balance or not load balance, load testing um, service to see if, you know, if you work in a small business and you can't afford, um, you know, good uh, hardware or network gear and you, or you're just relying on like AT&T or Comcast or whatever to do your DNS resolution, maybe you could throw a Raspberry Pi in there. Um, obviously, you can change your DNS resolution to Quad Nines or, or Google DNS, but uh, by using this, um, you can provide a little bit of extra value and security to your end user population. I wasn't able to test how many systems, but this is running on my um, just a couple machines, and you can see my load never went over um, one. Also, um, when I I was testing this. I went to a DNS testing tool, it's ultratools.com, and I just put in a website, this is my company's website, and ran it, and you can see the average time was in the 30 milliseconds. So the additional kind of step or hop um, for the DNS resolution really isn't that much of an impact for, you know, kind of end user experience being negatively impacted. Now back to the Pi Hole um, interface. I, I wanna, what I want to point out here is <clears throat> you can, you know, blacklist, like, so you can just straight up have a domain and say, um, you know, people can't go to, on your network, can't go to youtube.com or whatever. Like, you could just block it straight up. What I would recommend doing is going to settings and then block lists. So this is kind of how the network ad blocking piece goes. Um, but you can add your own block list, which is awesome. Now, Pihole uses a um, kind of hosts format, which if you've ever edited a host file on a um, endpoint, it's basically, you know, the IP address on the left and the domain name on the right. And it, that's it. That's what the host file format is. Um, essentially, this Pihole system can only take that type of format. So if you go to if, uh, firebog.net, which is just a huge collection of block lists, you can see they have suspicious and advertising, malicious and other and stuff like this. So not all of these are going to be, I just selected this one randomly. Not all of these are gonna be in that hosts file format. Okay, so see this one, this is a list of um, kind of suspect domains, but Pihole can't take these because it's gotta be in the host based file format. So uh, that one wouldn't work. But one like URL house uh, at abuse.ch, see it has that hosts format. So this one could work. So you can see I've, I've um, gone ahead and added it here. Now after you have added it, you have to update, which will basically go run and pull all these uh, lists fresh. Pihole does update this, um, the host list um, weekly. So once a week, it'll go out to all of these and run and uh, just have it going. I will say that you can uh, change the DNS resolver on, you know, the router that goes out, you know, the one that basically all the devices on your network are looking at if you have a smaller network, like a home network or a small business network, and just make the change there and have it point to the Raspberry Pi. Now the trick is, if the Raspberry Pi gets shut off or, or something happens or whatever, um, you know, obviously DNS resolution is gonna break, so you gotta be aware of that. Um, I did notice a couple times, it hasn't happened since I got it going up and running, but a couple times the DNS resolution uh, service would just stop working. Uh, Pihole actually has a command uh, restart DNS 
that will just do that. Um, it'll restart the DNS as it sounds. You can always check the status. PyHolt block is enabled, DNS servers running. So anyways, fun little project. Um, I hope you found it interesting. If you got a Pi um, laying around, give this um, project a, a shot. And so thanks. And until next time, stay secure.